welcome welcome back to part two of this interesting <laughs> this interesting piece we're starting off with pouring on our base color as you all know it's the black that's giving us all this trouble <laughs> and then afterwards you go ahead and smooth it out on the canvas and then start to place our pouring colors before we go any further please drop a comment let me know how you're doing how's the video i like the feedback i like to know that my subscribers are here and i want to interact with you so drop a drop a, drop a comment okay drop a comment all right let's get back to it one thing i realized with using water alone is that it dries fast especially if you don't use a lot of acrylic dries very fast so sometimes I have to be working very fast or I have to go ahead and make a new batch of color so that I can get it to you know smooth all over the canvas so that the um, other acrylic colors can flow well when I'm using them so after this we're gonna start putting on the colors we're gonna start with white and then we will layer I um, mean whichever colors that we feel but it's always at least a light color then a dark then another light color in a dark but I feel like I should have go ahead and use more white and kind of stayed away from adding black or adding like the green but it still worked out in the long run so let's get into it When I started doing this fluid artwork, I realized I could save some of my acrylic in these cups because they don't dry that easily. And if they do dry, you can add water before they dry thick and then you can't mix them anymore. So what I was doing here is like, you know, let me just pull off all the colors. You guys can see the colors from the back and just put them beside each other. So it's just easier to go ahead and flow and and I can pour them easily you know I don't have to keep on taking all the file paper so that's what you see me doing right here so let's get back to it <laughs> alright this is going to be interesting I live in a very noisy community. I'm trying to do this little voiceover and I have to do it 10 times. What I wanted to jump back on the video and say is that my blow dryer is very powerful. So I have to get myself a smaller one or one that has a very low settings because my blow dryer is literally on low settings and it's still powerful. So I have to keep it a distance away from the canvas so that my acrylic don't go blowing off far away from the actual canvas and I have nothing left on it so I, I guess that's the next goal to get myself a smaller blow dryer because I do have one I just need to locate it in my house but that is basically what I was saying in this section that my blow dryer is powerful you see how slow I'm going yeah yeah. All right, let's get back to it. <laughs> I hope that you're still here with me. 
this process right here when i was just looking back through the video i was realizing that i could have stopped right here i actually could but i didn't no i no i just felt like to continue mixing and mixing and then it started to get very muddy and i didn't like that so after here you will see um the full picture at the end it's it looks nice Percy, <laughs> but it's still very dark for me. I, I like bright colors. I like when even if I'm using black, there's still some level of brightness. So in part three, I will definitely show how I went from that dark art piece to a much brighter art piece with a little more intricacy with it. So I'll see you in part three. I'm just going to let this play out and then we'll go to part three. So you see the section that I put a mark in, it's very dark, it's very dark, I didn't like it, but although it's still a good piece, but I didn't like it. So we're going to go ahead and move to part 3, and you will see how I went ahead and adjust everything. All right, let's see what to expect in part three. All right, so I'm back on here again, guys. I can't even put it down. I'm just going to just tilt it. 